Hey everyone, I'm back here with the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus um, and I want to show you how to install Pi-hole, which is a DNS based ad blocker. So it's going to be a hardware ad blocker. Um, well, okay, it's hardware and software, but w for the sake of this video, we're going to call it hardware based. Um, but we're going to do a uh, hardware ad blocker and basically we're going to redirect your computer's DNS or your router's DNS to the pie hole and then it will use block lists to block ads across your network. Um, you you can enable and disable this uh, based on the computer or the virtual machine if you want so like if you want certain computers to use it you just redirect their DNS to it and if you don't want them to use it you can exclude them by not directing it to it. Um, it's super easy to use, super easy to install and what you see here is Ubuntu Mate desktop on my Raspberry Pi um, and just doing a uh, video capture through my capture card. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to pi-hole.net and that's this site here and it says, you know, a black hole for internet advertisements. And here's the command, curl, SSL, whatever it is. Um, and it's very, very easy to use. So we're going to go to applications. My cat's playing with a toy. And we're going to open up the terminal, and we're just going to type in that command. And then type in our password. It takes a little bit to install, but once it's installed, I'll show you how the user interface works. And if I can remember correctly, I haven't used it in a little while here. Um, I have it all set up and working on my network. I just don't access it very often, so. Uh, we'll see what happens once once this is done. One thing I wanted to say, this install can be done through command line. Um, based like you don't need a GUI to do this but just for sake of this video we're going to do it with the Ubuntu Mate desktop you can use Raspberry and Stretch or uh, Miniband Jesse whatever that one's called um, any really anything Linux based on Raspberry Pi so here it says this installer will transform your device into a network wide blocker Ad blocker. Pi-hole is free. Feel free to donate. Okay. Pi-hole is a server, so it needs a static IP address to function properly. So, in my opinion, the correct way to do this is to set it to DHCP and then reserve a address for the Pi-hole in your router. So if your router restarts or something like that, that address is reserved automatically assigns that address to your pie hole and I haven't done that yet on this one and I don't really plan to for this video um, but what I'll do is just set it to DHCP and then um, you know it'll my router will assign it a random one the reason I don't recommend setting it to a static IP on the device itself is that in case of a network restart or uh, power failure or something like that. If you're, if another device gets assigned that address, uh, then you're going to have an IP address conflict. Um, so, what I would do is just reserve all the addresses in your router, and that prevents that from happening. Um, you could also mirror that here as sort of like a backup. So you could have dot one six reserved in your router, and then set this manually to dot one six. So just in case something happens. 
uh, both your cover on both ends, but at minimum, I would reserve that address in your router. And all consumer routers should be able to do that. Um, and of course, professional or uh, enterprise routers should be able to as well. So we're going to do, uh, we're not going to do the wireless LAN, we want to do Ethernet zero. And so we're going to navigate down, hit spacebar, and then hit enter. So your upstream DNS is just the what you would normally be using as DNS. Uh, and for this we'll be doing, we'll just use Google. Um, I don't run IPv6 on my network, and so I'm going to uncheck that. And um, basically if you run IPv6 you can do that as well, but um, I don't, so we'll do the next. The gateway is 3.1, that's my router, and it detected that correctly. Uh, 3.39 is the address that my router assigned to this device, and that's fine. Yeah, so it says FYI, IP address conflict. And here it says it is also possible to use a DHCP reservation. Uh, so I would recommend doing that, and you can use that in combination with the static address. So it's basically saying the same thing I said before. And we would like to install the web interface so we can view that. Do you want to log queries? Sure, we'll do that. They've made this interface a lot smoother and cleaner since I last installed it, so it's nice to see they're making progress on this. Okay, so once you're at this page, um, it just shows you the general information. And I don't have a problem with getting this password out because I'm not going to use this as my pie hole anyway. Um, but you can view your admin interface locally. Um, by default, it's not shown external. So it's not you're not forwarding that address anywhere external. So um, it, so long as you're on your local network, we can browse to this device's address and then go to slash admin and view the uh, the admin interface. All right, so now that it's loaded, we're gonna we're going to log in with our password. Let's see if I can get this off the screen here. And so the password generated for us are is six seven capital R lowercase p u v z r. We're not gonna remember the password right now. Okay, so now that we're loaded here, um, sorry for the, the wait on that. Um, we should be able to do everything we need to within the web interface here. Uh, here you can see your dashboard. Here's your total queries that the DNS has been routing. And here's the block queries percentage. And you can view the block list. And you can temporarily disable it by clicking disable. You can choose a time frame or a custom time. Um, Permanently just means that it'll be disabled until you turn it back on. So uh, let's see if I can remember this. You can update your block list. Um, there's a bunch of different settings you can mess with. At the top you see uh, the status is active. You can see the temperature of your uh, Raspberry Pi. You can see the load average and memory usage. Um, but yeah, it's it's freaking awesome. I love uh, the Pi Hole. So basically, all you have to do on your devices, uh, if you want to set per device, what you can do is you can, uh, so for example, use .39 for this. You would just set your DNS, your primary DNS, to 192.168.3.39 on your uh, device if you want to do it that way. Or if you want to do it via your router, you just set your router's DNS to 192.168.3.39 and then what happens is when your device 
when your devices pick up uh, your information from your router, uh, you probably have to restart them. Um, your router will route everything through the Pi-Holes DNS first, um, and then through, in this case, Google's DNS, because that's how we set it up. Um, I wonder if we can test it. And since this is the only device that we have um, on the pie hole right now, we'll use this device itself to test it. There should be a test. Okay, please stop doing pop-ups. Yeah, so this page loads some page level ads from Google and Amazon. If you're not seeing them, your pie hole should be working. So it says unable to connect which is okay uh, and then it'll say ad blocking enabled we'll try some of these so I don't I don't I haven't seen any ads so far just pictures and a guide. So that's awesome. Okay, that one works. Another site with a lot of ads. I'm not seeing any ads. So here you see the advertisements category and there's nothing here because the Python's just, or not the Python, the uh, pie hole's not even loading it, letting it load. Um, let me just try a couple more. So this is what the site looks like, presumably with ads. Okay, so we got one that came through here. We could probably add that to the block list. Uh, on the right side, those, those are just other articles. So we got one ad that came through. Actually, this isn't an ad. This is just the site. So, yeah, so we're still perfect record. So at the bottom, that's not an ad, that's just the site itself saying you should subscribe to the site. And then we just see articles, trending videos, I don't see any ads on the sides. Um, so the pie hole is working pretty well. Um, if you have any questions on how to set this up, uh, give, give us a shout in Discord and we could probably help you out. Um, it's very simple, it's really easy to play around with. Um, and what I would recommend before you set your router's DNS to this, just set one computer's DNS on, on your network to your pie hole and try it out for a while and see how it goes. And uh, yeah, it's a super useful tool and it only costs about, you know, you can get pies on sale for like 15 bucks. You, you don't need to have a 3B or 3B plus. You can have like a 0W or something like that. So uh, yeah, so that's how to set up a pie hole. And again, if you have any questions, hit me up on Discord, leave a comment. Uh, I would appreciate like and subscribe if you can, um, and it really helps me out. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.